I'm joined here in Washington, D.C. on the margins of the spring meetings by Dina Shawa, who is the investment associate for the Bardia Impact Fund, which is supported by the European Investment Bank. And it's definitely one of the things that EIB wants to do more of under the Economic Resilience Initiative. Tell us a bit about what you're doing, Dina, in Jordan. So the Badia Impact Fund is an early stage uh, venture fund that's, uh, that's uh, investing in tech-enabled and tech-driven ventures. Uh, we are focused primarily on investing in Jordan and Egypt. We've invested in 14 uh, startups to date, an average ticket of $2 million. And we're actually in the final stages of investments. Currently, we're going to be making our last investment before the middle of this year. And how many people are employed in the companies you're supporting? So around 450 people are currently employed uh, in, in our portfolio companies. How many of them are young? I mean, give us an idea of who okay. they are. So 70% of which are under 30, 40% are women, and 9% studied abroad. Now, the, the focus of the Economic Resilience Initiative is very much actually on young people and on women. So to what extent do you think uh, that is the right focus, that you come from that region? I mean, our region has 250 million young pe people under 30. And actually, 25%, if you focus on, on, young, uh, on young people, 25% of the labor market is actually on or people that are fit to be in the labor labor market are currently unemployed and that percentage is even higher when you just when when you kind of dissect them to into being women so w what is your focus um particularly okay so our focus with this fund has been pretty opportunistic we have not had any industry or vertical focus that's because the MENA region has infinite number of, of challenges and we think that you know the market is still very early and very ripe for, for multiple different uh, entrants. Uh, but as we evolve, our focus, and, and we're kind of starting to think about our evolution right now because we're in the final stages of investment, we're, we're actually going to be focusing on inclusion. And inclusion, currently, the way that we're thinking about it, inclusion within four main verticals, which are healthcare, employment, education, and urbanization. And within employment and, and, and education, there's going to be a very big focus, obviously, on young people and on, on women. When uh, people talk about the migration challenge in a region uh, and a country like Jordan. Um, where do you think the efforts are important uh, to, to go? I mean, do you think that it is right to focus, for example, on the refugee population? So, I mean, for us and for Jordan, Jordan is a country that has crisis or war on four of its five borders. Uh, you know, this is something that we live every single day. Uh, we have north of 2.5 million uh, north of 2.5 million refugees in in Jordan currently for us we cannot differentiate between refugees and host communities for, for us they're one and the same because we feel like if we differentiate between them that will only cause tension actually we're very opportunistic in our approach and we go where the opportunity is but at the same time we want to be more inclusive and make sure that we through the, the portfolio companies that we invest in and through their business models, we can actually be more inclusive and provide opportunities for refugees and actually low mi migrant, uh, uh, low income Jordanians as well. So give us a couple of examples, if you would, about how you can both take a sort of hard business approach, which is actually what yeah. you do, but at the same time uh, be helping the region uh, to, to actually address this very key challenge. So, I mean, one of, one of the things that we're going to be focusing on as, as we evolve is actually through, and, and that's under the employment umbrella, is investing in online marketplaces. And with online marketplaces, the, the beauty there is that, you know, when you, when you look at refugees, permits are very limited. And, and if, if they do get an opportunity to actually work, they're actually working in kind of the bottom of the pyramid jobs. But through empowering, uh, uh, you know, and investing in market online marketplaces, we can actually enable them to generate income and live a very fulfilled life through the informal marketplace where they do not necessarily need permits to, to, to work. And this is not only empowering for refugees, but also for anyone that's, you know, excluded or does not have such opportunities uh, within the Jordanian community. You were telling the panel earlier here at the Bertelsmann event in Washington a little bit about some of the projects, some of the businesses that you were just signing, uh, one in particular about um, hell, uh, education resources. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about that. So one of the companies that we recently issued a term sheet uh, into is, uh, we, we, we issued a term sheet for, is an education uh, company that basically focuses on providing educational products and services that are, that are focused on Arabic uh, literacy, but also numeracy, and are aligned with, the curric with curriculum and learning outcomes. And what's the beauty of that company is this company has been, you know, 
focused on this particular product for the past year and a half. They've raised less than a million dollars in investment, but at the same time, their impact is exponential because within that very short period of time, they've been able to reach 70,000 students across 250 uh, schools in four countries in the region. So that is something that's really exponential and is only, you know, can only happen because of the low cost technology that they're using and because of the low cost of software that, that enables them to provide for, for these schools. And you know, today they're obviously a for-profit company, they're focused on private schools, but as well they are focused on, on public schools through a recent um, initiative that they did with the Ministry of Education in Jordan, where they took 800 students across 20 schools and they basically had a control group and a treatment group. And the, the group that did receive the, uh, th th this product saw a 30% increase in literacy uh, across all uh, all levels and and we think that's magnificent and because you can you have the data to actually measure that they're going into different countries right now and going to different ministries of education and making sure that you know they buy into this but they only buy into it because the data is there and the data is very telling this is certainly the kind of project the European Investment Bank is interested in under the Economic Resilience Initiative. Going forward, finally, what would you uh, ask uh, the EIB and other donors uh, in terms of uh, the kind of support that both the fund that you're working for, but also more widely the region needs in order to confront these challenges? I mean, with our fund, obviously, as we evolve and as we create a new product, we would love for EIB to continue to be our supportive partner. Uh, you know, AIB has been wonderful throughout this, this journey and will continue to be wonderful in the lifetime of this, this fund. Uh, but also we see, I mean, particularly we spoke about women and, and with women through some initiatives that I've been doing with, with some of my colleagues, we realize that the reason why women are not as empowered uh, as they should be and, and do not receive, uh, you know, pr appropriate amounts of funding, particularly after they cross the seed stage level, is mentorship and mentorship that's actually scalable. Uh, and, and mentors do not necessarily need to be other women, but just mentors from across the globe that can actually, you know, boost some energy and, and really show the, uh, boost uh, energy and confidence in these women and tell them, you know, that they should not be conservative in, in telling their story. They are actually working on something special. We don't want to, you know, ever have some sort of quota where we need to invest in X number of women because we invest where the opportunity is and we invest in, you know, according to merit and where we see, you know, uh, the industry is going. But I think women many times are actually doing amazing things but just do not tell their story in a way that is exciting for, for, for venture partners. Thank you. A clear call there for some concrete support. Thanks very much, Thank Dina. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for the interview.